Here's my desktop. Do you guys see that okay? Yep. Yep. Okay, excellent. Yep. Oh, wow. On the upgrade, they got a little notice that comes up. It says participants can now see your desktop. Well, that's good to know. <laughs> I guess I don't have to ask all the time. Okay. Um, I've been playing around with macros uh, a bit lately, as you guys know. And uh, I was looking at the difference between... I also have a 35 macro, which I got a while back, which I never really used for macro. I just used it for night sky stuff. But uh, I've been playing around with it lately. I thought I'd just show you some stuff real quick. Ooh. Nice. Yeah. That is nice, yeah. Thanks. OK, so this is with the 100 macro. And it's probably about one to one. And then. Um, took it in the luminar and enhanced it a bit, which made it a little snappier. So that's the before, that's the after. Mm, yeah, I don't like good. that. But then I, I started shooting with the uh, 35 because I wanted to get, you know, I'm falling off in the back here a bit, the stalks and stuff. I wanted to try and get everything sharp. So I went to the 35. Oh wow! And I was able oh, to difference. Do that. Yeah, I was able to get that, but I had to back off a bit. So my, you can see my size by the time I cropped it down was pretty small. So I took it in a Photoshop just to see how well it would enlarge. This is one hundred seventy percent, and I'm going to compare the two here, just so you can take a look. And now, what is your um, your zoom? Uh, well, this is a 35 macro. No, no, I mean, um, how large are these images? Oh, well, right now, I think, large. I think they're on fit. Let me, uh, hang on, let me just tab over so we can see what's going on here. Yeah, they're on fit. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to put this one at 100%. Okay. And, and this one, I'm going to have to do it. 200% the match. Or maybe I can get this one. Let me see if I can get this one to 50% uh, instead of 100. So I'm not overdoing that one. I can get this one over to 100%. OK. And now you can see them side by side. OK. They're pretty close. The one on the right is still a little bit bigger, I think. Yeah, it's a little larger, yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't go 200%. I went 100% on these, yeah, on this one. Mm -hmm. uh, but let's just take these two. Oops, let me get that one and that one. Is that right? Yeah, hang on, let me get back out of this. I always get mixed up with these windows. OK. There we go. All right. So this one's at 50%. Yeah, that's that's the one I enlarged 200%. So they should be the same size now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can see the file size is basically double. Mm -hmm. Yep. But um, it almost seems to me that the enlargement on Photoshop gave it an apparent sharpness. It looks like it. Yeah. It's kind of Punched up a little bit. Yeah. So like if we go to, like on this one, if we go to 100% and take a look here and then go over this one, go back to 100%. Well, actually 200%. Oh, is it 50? No, that's not right. There's a, oh, I see it's 100 over here. All right, I have to go 200%. Yeah, you can see it's, it's picked that up a bit. So I'm almost thinking that if I want to get something one-to-one, -one, 
more in focus and have a little more depth of field, but the 35 is working a little better for me than the 100. Yeah, I've got one that's 60. Mm -hmm. It's a one-to-one -one, and it's kind of in between. And mm -hmm. that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And do you have other lenses that you've tried or? Well, I've got, my macro is a 100 like yours. Uh -huh. And I, I've, got a, I've got a 50. Yeah. Oh, mine's, a, <clears throat> mine's a 105. And then mine's I can, a 105, too. And, and I 105, have, yeah, don't seem to use it a whole lot. I, a lot of times I'll go with it. And my 50 is not a macro, but I a lot of times like the 50 better than the 105. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I, missed the, I missed the initial question. I just, Managed to get on here. So. <laughs> well, hi, Ellen. Uh, no, I was just making some comparisons. Uh, if I, I, I'll just quickly go back. This was uh, this was the uh, hundred millimeter, and I was having problems holding focus in the back. Okay. You know, I wasn't on a group like this. I wasn't getting my depth of field. So what 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 was the f stop in that? Thomas? It didn't matter. I, you know, I went to uh, from eleven to thirty two. It didn't change a whole lot. Uh, oh, really? Which I've read, and they they say it doesn't. That you know, between eight and eleven is ideal for that lens. Right. Um, it still wasn't carrying it the way I wanted it to. Uh, so then I switched to the thirty five macro, and I was able to get it much sharper. Oh, okay. Yeah, always. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. Quite a bit sharper. Yeah. So, but the problem I had with that was um, the closest, closest I could get the focus. By the time I pulled the crop out, uh, let me go to you real quick here. Uh, oh, no. That one might be full. Working distance is quite a bit different, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, the working distance is considerably different. Yeah, here you go. Like on this one's a good example. And, and that's how much I had to crop in to, to get what I wanted. Mm. I yeah. found that on the 105, you pretty much to get a very big depth of field, you've not got to stack the photos. Yeah, well, that was the next thing I was going to try was photo stacking. And I'm going to read up on that. I think there's a a feature in the R5. Al, have you found photo stacking in yours? Yeah, yeah, I've done photo stacking. Uh, it's on, on my uh, Z6. Yeah, I can do that. Yeah, how about it's, on the uh, R5? It's a, little, it's a little bit of a hit and met, a met, miss um, in terms of some of the things it uh, asks you, but it, um, I've, it's been pretty successful. I, I probably took uh, probably about 10 shots of a light bulb and it and it, it did it perfectly and the light bulb was maybe about three inches long so okay yeah these are about the size of my thumb uh, the top of my thumb or maybe right. a little bigger they're pretty small it should do that yeah. easily probably in about four or five shots at the most yeah because i don't have as much depth to carry yeah yeah so al crawford uh, did you find focus decking on the on the r5 yet I haven't fooled with it. it uh -huh. It's there, but uh, yeah, yeah, I know it's uh, there. I've just kind I of, haven't uh, done it. Yeah, I think I'm going to probably try that next and see see if it'll give me what I want. Because um, I love the lens, uh, especially out in the field. Uh, uh, I like it uh, considerably more than the 35 for for macro work, anyway. But yeah. uh, tabletop, it seems that the 35 was able to get what I needed. Okay, well. Sandy, one thing I did with uh, my macro and focus stacking was I throw it on live view. And well, then you can yeah. kind of determine where you want the focus to be. I mean, it, it's, you might want to try it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. But you can hit the, you can hit the screen. On, oh, yeah, on I do live that. View. Yeah, I, I do that quite a bit. In fact, the way I had the camera over, it was, it was difficult to get over into the eyepiece. So I just flipped the, uh, the viewfinder. Yes, yeah. on the back over toward me, and I, I just moved the uh, focus point around on that. So, yeah, yeah instead of having to manual life focus, a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't tried a manual focus every couple millimeters or something. Yeah, yeah, okay. 
Yeah. <clears throat> I guess that'll be something I'll, I'll give it a try you know, if I get time this week. Okay, well, let's get started. Um, I haven't seen and then, I, then I think all I did was take the stuff into Photoshop. Um, you know, you say edit in Photoshop yeah. as, right. uh, as a, take them all in as layers. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then just go ahead and stack the layers over in Photoshop too. So that's yeah, that's another way to do it. Yeah, that would be <clears> easier than uh, than trying to set it up. Well, I guess I could try both ways and see what works better. What has more control? Okay, thank you. That was helpful feedback. All right, let's uh, start with Al Crawford. Oh, you've been up in Calgary. <laughs> uh well i don't know you got pink ones up there <laughs> uh, no, no. They're, they're southern hemisphere out hey, we got uh, lots of ice. <laughs> this one uh this whole series that i i have today uh was taken with a uh uh a canon um 7d mark ii uh, that I have since sold, and I just went back and uh, picked out some of my favorite of the older pictures that I have. I'm going to bring a, another group from the same camera next week, uh, but uh, uh, some of my favorite pictures off of that camera, I won't show you all of them. I took about 15 or 16,000, but... Uh, no, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I don't think... It, uh, Sandy would let me show them all. <laughs> but, but anyway, uh, this one was taken in, in the Antarctic uh, in uh, 2015. And I was using a 100 to 400 uh, uh, Canon lens at, uh, uh, at 400. And then it's cropped. Mm. I, I happened to take it from the ship and I and we didn't even get off the ship, but uh, I didn't really get to see the Antarctic very much. I was sick as a dog the whole time. So. Uh oh. Oh, no. Seasick or, or other kind? Uh, I had a cold or flu or something uh, like that. It wasn't shame. COVID. This was 2015. So. Yeah, what a shame. Love the color of that ice. Yeah, I love blue ice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I, I I might have could have got that uh, uh, glob of crap off of it, but uh, <laughs> I did. It was there, and so I left it. Is that his lunch or, uh, <laughs> or his business? I think it was business. Yeah, I think so too. Sure, it looks like it. Yeah. yeah. Really nice composition with the penguin there yeah i i kind of liked it uh and and i agree with you i really like the color of the uh ice on that one yeah what would you think about maybe running a gradation around from here up uh, to darken this background a bit and bring him more prominent well i did a little bit uh -huh. but uh uh, I could have a little bit more and make, you're talking about making the sea above a little darker. Correct. Yeah. And, and, and uh, uh, it, it's, it's reasonably dark the way it is. I, 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 I could have done it a little darker. I, I didn't. Mm -hmm. Okay. By the way, one of the things I did do uh, when I went back, because these are older pictures, I did reprocess them in Lightroom, so mm -hmm. so it, they're they're uh, processed. I think better than I, I had originally. Isn't that always the case? <laughs> yeah, I, I went back to some when I first started with Lightroom, which was only a couple of years back, I guess. And uh, yeah, it's quite a difference after you work with it for a while. Interesting. Let's move on to the next guy here. Okay. Uh, to you. They're not in the same order I have them. So no. uh, 
Okay, right. this is this is Bosque del Apache. Mm. Uh, and that was a 2015. Uh, and uh, I thought it was a, a nice picture of the uh, hawk. Uh, I think it's a Ferriganus hawk, but uh, I'm not a birder, so I take pictures of birds and I don't know what they are. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> That's a nice blue one. Yeah. I, I did. One of the things I remember I did on that one uh, this time is I, I used the Lightroom's uh, uh, subject selector and darkened the background. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah, it did a nice job. Yeah. Yeah, just brought him up a little bit so we can take a look at him. Nice. Really nice framing. Yeah, my, that tree of them. With this Y here, yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes them pop nicely. I wonder if a little vignette would help too. Just, just a little bit. P possibly, yeah. 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 Didn't, didn't give that a I'd, big thought, but mm -hmm. I do sometimes. Yeah. I'd crop it down a little bit more from the top. I think. You do what? Bring it down a little bit from the top. Yeah. Maybe even. Oh, yeah. yeah top and bottom. Oh, yeah. yeah. Instead of full frame. Yeah, somewhere in there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Oh, even, yes. You could even bring mm -hmm. some of their right side out too. Yeah, mm -hmm. somewhere, somewhere in there. It helps with all the busyness. Yeah. More focus on the hawk. Mm -hmm. There you go. You might put a slight blur on that background because you yeah. said you did. Um, that, would, that would really help. Yeah. yeah, it's a beautiful photograph. Mm -hmm. Really, you can see the in, the eyes on the hawk are so focused. Mm -hmm. This was a, uh, by the way, uh, my Tamron 100 to 600 lens at 600 wow. and then that was that was on a crop uh camera and then you guys have and i cropped it and then you've cropped it more so uh, uh that's a heck of a lens sure yeah. it is. particularly for the price yeah that's which, true. which lens is it al what's that what make of lens is it it's a tamron I'm 150 on. to 600. Oh, I've got the I've got the Sigma Sigma version of that. I'm yeah, pretty, pretty uh, happy with it too. The, the Sigma, as as I've read, are in, and the Tamron are are pretty close to equivalent. Yeah, yeah, really good value for money. There's no doubt. Yeah. Yep. Okay. This is in Rothenburg, Germany. It's it's an old town, uh, really ancient town. But uh, uh, this was on a tour, and this guy played the role of a lamplighter hmm. uh, and toured us around the town, which you always walked in the town. They didn't allow vehicles, right. and uh, uh, this again was in 1915. This was an EFS uh, 18 to 135 uh, Canon. And I took it at a full 135 and it's cropped down from that. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I thought he was an interesting character. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool, like Robert Plant. <laughs> <laughs> On a good on a good day. <laughs> yeah, right. A very good day. <laughs> uh, there you go. Yeah, I'm wondering. I keep seeing this hand. Uh, I'm wondering maybe if you darken that down just a little bit, that would help it out. I hate to curl. Okay. It, yeah, because it really adds to the shot. And then the 
I don't know, was, was this a fairly high uh, ISO? Because I'm seeing uh, quite a bit of grain too. Yeah, I'm not sure what the ISO was. I didn't check on that. Yeah. Well, you and can, you can and this was in down. 20, this was six years ago. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's nice with, with the uh, select subject now. You can you can work on the background by inverting it and then just take all the grain out of the background. Right. And, and really blur it. it. It's a real nice feature. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could give that a try. Excellent. Nice composition, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Ooh. Nice. Mm -hmm. This is an Austria. It's Maria Alm, and it was taken from the balcony of the room I had. Uh, and I've stayed in this particular uh, uh, town, and in fact, in this hotel, uh, several times. It, I, I, we really love it. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's the uh, church in the middle of the town. And I got this one right in the evening, just as the lights were coming on. And uh, it, it's a small town. In the wintertime, it's a ski resort. And in the summertime, it's for uh, uh, hikers. Interesting. I kind of like the Dolomites in Italy. Um, same kind of thing. So, so this the ski uh, ski lift here, or uh, no? Because because I know where it is. We're looking in the wrong direction to find the oh, ski okay. lift. But just just something else. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Street light. Yeah, I think what you're pointing out there is actually some construction. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, we really like the warm and cool effect you're getting mm -hmm. at the twilight. That was a that was again with my uh, eighteen to thirty five, and it's at sixty four millimeters. Mm -hmm. Wow. Nice. And then this is your current background that you're living yeah, this is Yeah, this is the one that I stuck on my background today. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's in Botswana, Chobe National Park. Oh, it looks fabulous. And our guide took us to this overlook of the river where the elephants below were coming in to drink. And the total herd was over 100. Wow. Wow. Uh, wow. I mean, there was no way. In fact, part of them weren't even visible, but uh, uh, there was no way I could get the whole thing. But uh, uh, that was one of my two favorite pictures from that that shoot. Yeah. Uh, and they were just coming in and it was it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah, uh, just to watch them. We sat there for an hour watching them come down. They, some would come down and then leave, and others would follow. It was it was great. Hmm. I'd love to see that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I've seen about eight or ten. That's probably the most uh, when we were up in Ken in Kenya. That's quite a few here. <laughs> <It's> amazing. <laughs> I love the two babies in the middle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's babies everywhere, but yeah, these yeah. two are really cute. But those two right there. Yeah. 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 I, well, if, you like, if, you, if you like the babies, you're going to like the one that was taken at the same time or <laughs> somewhere time next week. Okay. <laughs> All right. Stay if tuned. Continued. Huh? Uh, this, was, this was, by the way, taken with a Tamron 18 to 400. And I took it at 50 millimeters. Uh -huh. So I, I didn't use the stretch of the 400 at all. Uh, in fact, I used the sweet spot probably of the lens uh, because by doing 50, which is kind of in the middle of the lens, uh, uh, you know, I'm not at the widest angle and I'm not at the uh, depth of the uh, focus, but, but that was a great lens. I sold it and I sold the 18 to 400 and the uh, 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 7 D Mark II 
uh, to a young woman that I knew, I knew since she was 10 years old. And she'd been taking pictures with uh, her iPhone and they were great pictures. And I'd been trying to get her to get a good camera. So I sold her this one at a pretty good price. And she's been taking wonderful pictures with it. So uh, uh, that's always nice. So, so uh, it is still, the camera and the lens is still going good. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent. I sold it when I got the, the R5. Excellent. Okay. Oh, goodness. That that's at Taos Pueblo. Oh, and it, and again the uh, uh, eighteen to four hundred, and uh, uh, that was at thirty five millimeters. So. Wow. That. Really? At, 18 to 400 was one heck of a walk around lens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because at 18, you're, not, you're fairly wide angle on a crop. And at 400, it was like 640 on a, on, uh, a full frame. And so you had from reasonably wide angle, about 28 or 29 millimeters to uh, 640 and that, that's a heck of a range yeah and and it it held up sharply uh relatively sharply through the whole range sharp enough that i can show you and if all you're doing is looking on a tv screen it's plenty good uh, very nice nice sense of depth in this one yeah really and it's crisp you must have had but do you remember what f-stop you used? No, I, well, really? it, it, it's, it, it's, it, it's in my metadata, of course. Yeah. yeah. I, I didn't record that to tell you. Really nice. Because like the uh, foreground's nice and clear. Yeah, I like this little ghost thing here. It must have been uh, <laughs> something that came in out of focus. It almost looks like a spirit coming out of the grave there. <laughs> it's great. It's really nice. nice. Well, great. Thanks, Al. We'll see what you got next week. Okay. Well, let's see. Who haven't we seen for a while? I guess Kim. I'm here. All right. Somewhere. <laughs> oh, that one's nice. Mm -hmm. well, I, sure. I lost you guys for some reason, Al. I've got the screen, but not Sandy's screen. You can't see my screen? Oh, there. oh no. Uh, yeah, now I do it. Now I've got it. Yeah. Okay, good. So we're looking at the pressure. pressure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice image. Thank you. That was out at Kanoa, out Kanoa at the lake pond. And just kind of took it into a high key, uh, actually exposed it, I think about two and a half stops up on the exposure when I took it. Mm -hmm. I really like that you've got such a clean background around the bird. There's no twigs or uh -huh. anything in the way. Very he nice. was up pretty high, so I was I had my 100 to 400, and I was out to 400, and then it's cropped. Mm -hmm. Just for grins, another crop might be him flush left a little okay. bit. Okay. Yeah, that might work. Something like that. I'm not fond of him looking out of the picture. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you yeah. Know. yeah. Move, move that crop over to, to the right so that he's looking into it. Yeah, that's another option. You just worried about the tail. I'm not sure I would have. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like I like that one. Yeah, I could even pull a little more off there. Yeah, and get rid of some. I kept playing with it as far as how to 
balance it out without you know, oh, a, a square a square crop usually works pretty nice on these as well Just yeah one to one mm -hmm. that's better yeah I, I like that crop yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, let's try a square and see what happens. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, a little bit more at the top, I think. Yeah, I need a wee bit more than that, but yeah, yeah, yeah I'll give them a little more. Mm -hmm. That would be a good bird shot, but not a good photo shot, I don't think. Uh huh. Well, it'd be real easy to drop another sky in there, that's for sure. Sure, yeah. Well, I, I kind of like the blown out background. Right, I, 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 I do too. I just get brains. There's no, more like, focus on him with the blown out Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's, it's not like it's terribly, terribly overexposed. It's just um, kind of an even, you know, pale background that really brings the bird out. Brings the bird out. Was it a cloudy day? uh this was why is that why yeah, not, not, no it just the sky was just flat it was just a, no clouds but just total just flat sky no color to it really i think this yeah. was either last week or the week before what light room or luminar sky replacement i would change it i'm just i'm, I'm being a little extreme here but selectively maybe if you uh Ghosted some of this background down and left him prominent. That could be cool too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you could just put a, you know, another back, another layer down there, just fill it with white or whatever color you want. Or pull it in Lightroom and use the subject select on the mask, Kim. And yeah. And then knock that background down some more. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious how select subject would deal with this. Oops, I'm on the wrong one. There we go. <laughs> we match the select on white. Oh, I did a pretty nice job. Oh, I sure did. Yeah, I think just do an ad, get a brush, auto mask, just bring his leg in. Mm -hmm. I got my, yeah, I got my flow down. There we go. Yeah, so you could do something like that and then uh, just take it in and invert it. Problem I, I've had before though is when I go to invert sometimes the uh, yeah it gets it gets goofy if you have but it grabs the brush invert yeah. it but it doesn't grab the yeah. subject invert yeah, exactly so um, let's delete the brush here and then try this again. just take it invert it. Yeah. I think Adobe's still got some work to do with this mask. Yeah, so. it just takes some track with the brush and do the same thing. Just get yep. him get out of there. Yeah. yeah, it's not perfect, but boy, it's a hell of a lot better than it used to be. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And then uh, you know you could you could just uh, do a lot of things with it. Uh, I suppose you could. Uh, Try to clarify, dehaze it down, something like oh, that. I like that. Yeah, that could be fun. Okay. You can take the sharpness down a little bit if you want to kind of ghost it out. But then you might want to do that in a separate one and keep this twig sharp so it stays, or sharper, yeah. so it stays more prominent. And then these guys drop back more. That would probably be the way uh -huh. I do it. I do it in two steps, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, there's a lot you could do with that if you want to make it a little more kind of pastel or painterly looking. I really like the way he's got his wings pointed, Ken. Yeah. I really like that. It's nice. Thanks. Yeah, that's right. Uh, cancel. Don't show you. 
has a real nice kind of oriental flavor towards it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it was kind of in a, sort of what I was going for. You but know? you got it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think maybe, you know, ghosting some of that back might even enhance that feeling a little more. Okay. Okay. Ooh. And this is on at, at Canola also. Yeah. Uh, took it into Topaz and it's a chalk pastel filter. <clears throat> and it's out in the, that Senega area. Yeah, it's a nice spot. A dreamy looking. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just thinking by hand, you could blur this down a little bit right in here. That would help it out. I like the fact that these are staying sharp, that uh, the stuff that's floating on top, and then the water is getting softer and more out of focus. Nice. Any other thoughts? You may, maybe a slight vignette on the edges mm -hmm. okay. to bring your eye back to that tree. Yeah, or, 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 or just run a gradation across here to make, make this darker so you, you get more in center. Yeah, yeah. There. Instead of Very nice. Down here. Yeah. Good catch. And what did you say you used? Uh, it was chalk pastels filter really? and topaz. Right. topaz you, Studio 2. Did you use it at a hundred percent or did you very I backed it off just a little bit. Okay. Really nice. Yeah. I needed something. There are power lines and power poles back there. And so I needed to find a filter that I was I would managed to get rid of the poles, but couldn't do anything with the power lines were just causing too much trouble. So I needed some sort of filter that it would just all kind of blend in. Mm -hmm. Nice. That worked. Goodness. <laughs> I wow. went to Kennedy Park up in Tucson Saturday. Um, and this is a, if I'm pronouncing it right, Muscovy duck. Yeah. Wow. About the weirdest looking critters I've seen as far as birds go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Looks like he's got a dose of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Like you ran into a cactus. <laughs> yeah. Good. I would crop the closer to the beak here, maybe. You know, you, you're so tight okay. on the top and the side. Uh, and I think, you know, just kind of mimicking that. Just bring top. it right in. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't I, I wasn't sure. Yeah, I think that might help it out. What do you think? A little too tight for me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I was just trying to give it about the yeah. same amount of air as uh -huh. And I'd probably open this eye up a little bit more, maybe saturate it a little more. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. What do you think of that dark spot that's back behind him? It's another duck. I mean, I tried yeah, to. I don't mind it. I would open like this up more or crop okay. it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you could, you could crop it, I suppose. Yeah. I kept playing with the crop there and I just wasn't sure. Yeah, because it does bring your eye up there, maybe somewhere in here. And it's pretty hot over here too. So that might solve two problems there. Okay. Just a little, little bit of it. And, and it's not as noticeable here. More. And then you can run a grad across here too and then bring this down just a little bit. Wow. Yeah, so yeah, quickly you could just go to our friend here, camera raw, filters there, you know, something like that. It should start with, you know, something like that might be enough. Yeah. And then you know, we can take a look and see what it's doing. Yeah, I don't mind it uh, 
it's not yeah it's not affecting it much no no it's it, it, it's starting to stay a little bit actually i think it's helping it otherwise you can get the you know subtract and just take it out with the branch uh -huh. you know and then then you do another one uh again with a brush and uh, just kind of get this area here you could get off the eye pupil there a little bit off the edge there, there come on in there okay and again maybe uh Oh, so let's, let's, see. let's check highlights a little bit in white. I liked it red. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I would punch the saturation up a bit. And you could make it a little redder if you want. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think so. Um, probably okay. somewhere, somewhere in there, maybe. That's up to you. Um, uh -huh. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, clarity kind of gives it that that extra almost like highlight that you get a knife with depth. Uh, I would give it a little clarity like that. So let's take a quick peek here. So we're here. Go back to history. There's, that's your before and that's where you are now. Oh, that's yeah. Yeah, that's, that's your, eye, your eye goes to the eye now. Yeah. That's a really good lesson to send you that one. But, yeah. Yeah. Good, good. Well, that's helpful. Okay, moving on. Yeah. Oh, I I love this that. is a crested duck at Kennedy <laughs> Park. So. Nice. I just, it was interesting to see how they just twist their heads and necks all over the place and it's like a 180. <laughs> <laughs> Just gotta fold themselves up. That's amazing. I love all the feather textures. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very quite nice. A, quite an assortment. Yeah, I forgot what they call this strainer in their mouths, but oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It's nice. really nice. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I'd do any with this one. Maybe, maybe a hair of a vignette, but really subtle. Ah. And then this is here in town. I took this uh, late last summer, actually, or early fall. Um, this is out in the West Desert Preserve. And just the dry grass is just sort of reminding me of wheat. Yeah, it looks mm -hmm. nice. um, so this is in Topaz, uh, a lavender meadow filter, and then the smudge tool, just to give some different look to the cactus, mm -hmm. and then give some color to the sky, because it was just a kind of a flat blue sky, nothing there. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if this grunge is helping it or not. I would okay. definitely get rid of this dark one. The mothership about to land, Sandy. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Forgot about that. Maybe gradiate this up a little bit. Okay. Not all the way, but you know, just kind of up to about here. So you got a, a little depth going there. Yeah, I actually took this on my iPhone. Nice. Wow. Yeah, that was processed it in light, uh, Lightroom and Topaz, but it was on the phone. Mm -hmm. Yep, that works. Actually, Sandy, I like that grass in the foreground. Mm -hmm. I think it adds to it. I oh, wouldn't yeah. cut any. I wouldn't cut any of it out. No, I wouldn't crop it. I would. I would just tone it down a little bit. Oh, okay. I, uh, I misunderstood. Oh, not a problem, Al. Yeah, I, I would just uh, oh, back the camera around here. You know, and you could do this obviously in the Lightroom. But uh, I would just do a little short grab, maybe something like that. And uh, just a little bit there. Okay. If it gets a little muddy, you can just warm it up a little bit uh -huh. with the temperature. 
And you can even make it a little, little redder if you want it, like that. That really brings out the grass. Yeah. Once, you, once you have that, you can play around with it. You might even want to bring it sure. up a little bit, something like that. And if you don't like the gradation, you just you know change it. At least now you have a visualization that you can interact with. Mm -hmm. yeah, so it's always a nice way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All Thank right. you. Thank you. All right. Let's go to Maureen. Uh, uh, hello, Gloria. That's just a deer I got in Madera Canyon, but she just was looking at me and it was kind of like a perfect pose. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Very nice. Got the Very right nice there. detail in the hair and the ears and under his chin. Oh, That's yeah. uh, yeah. really nice. I was pretty close, and luckily she was very still. Yeah. Pick she eyes. liked you. <laughs> yeah, she didn't see me as a threat. Yeah. <laughs> I imagine, I mean, it seems like the deer in that area are pretty used to people. I did say, yeah. Yeah, they don't they don't necessarily leave when you come. <laughs> Speaking of leaves, I like this leaf. <laughs> it's kind of cute. Uh, I would definitely lose this little piece of whatever it is here. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and then just a little bit of highlights. Down, these down just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I took them down before, but now seeing it on your screen, I wonder if I should put a little bit of a blur on that background. You could. Maybe it's just a little too sharp. Yeah. yeah you could do that. Because the background was well lit and she, you know, her face really wasn't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can tone it down and then soften it. That would definitely bring her out more. Yeah, it's a little competition there. Yep. Agreed. Anybody else? You could lighten the eyes a little bit, especially that right eye that's darker. Yeah, it is pretty dark. Okay, thank you. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow. So. Now this is one I took several years ago and uh, he's a black stallion purportedly, but I think he's really a dark bay and a little bit sunburned, you know, from being outside. So I, I cropped him. The background was kind of um, piping, you know, saw piping and uh, fence piping and uh, this particular background is about five or six different layers of backgrounds, colors. I have some um, water drops on windows, pictures in there too, to kind of give it a little bit of texture and kind of make him come out. You can't, I tried, I lightened his, around his eye a little bit, but because he's dark, you want him to look dark mm -hmm. so I couldn't light I lightened the jowls up a little bit I darkened a little bit in the contours on his face to kind of bring that bone structure out um, I tried cropping him out initially using um, Photoshop and select subject mm -hmm. um, and it worked pretty well on this one because he doesn't have hair flying anywhere. It was a pretty easy crop. The only thing it, I had to go back and just tidy up around the, um, the chain um, on the halter, but that was it. Yeah. Right. But I, so, yeah. But overall, is it, is it not pleasing because he is dark? I, mean, I prefer gray and horses personally because they photograph a much better you can really see their bone structure and next maybe adding in contrast to him just a little bit because it almost looks a little flat yeah it's a it's a really nice image but it does look a little bit flat around the the main area it's very flat on the neck and 
that all kind of yeah this area you know, here. maybe just add a little bit of um I, likeness I kinda, to that area i kind of liked it i like the mood of it uh, uh yeah uh if you make it if you make the horse stand out more you change the mood oh yeah, if you do too much, definitely. Yeah. Uh, and, and I really love the mood of that photo. Yeah, oh, I do you. too. I uh, wish I, you know, normally I take three or four shots at once. In this pose, I only have the one. All right, so here's your select subject. I'm going to just um, take the, where the halter is on here out. It's the chain. Okay, and then I would just see overall a little bit of contrast, and I wouldn't do much. Mm -hmm. That brings out a little bit of the highlights on the main. Yeah. And then maybe just... Well, if you bump the... Uh, yeah, I'm going to bump the shadows up just a tad. Well, if you bump yeah, it, I did. He's going to get milky again. So yeah, see, he just careful. did. Yeah, he yeah. just did. Now, you could bring the shadows up and then pull the blacks down. But you gotta watch you don't know, clip up here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Black subjects are difficult. They just Somewhere are on there, and then then you could take that. Yeah, that's not so bad. And then play with the. Now another thing you could check out also is uh, clarity and oh, so clarity. Forth. Yeah. Yeah, clarity will give it the contrast you want. I wouldn't go too far though. No. No, it, that has a tendency sometimes to make them look artificial, I think. Exactly. And, and not soft. But just to hit somewhere between four. Okay. Three, four, up somewhere in there. Just, just okay. to, to give it a give it a but It looks like the coat is so smooth, smooth there, Marine, that it's yeah. going to be. Uh, I'm sorry, Steve. Almost I, any, I couldn't. Almost anything, almost anything you do with it because the coat on this horse is so smooth. Yeah. yeah. That you're not going to be able to like extract a whole lot of detail out of there. Um, yeah. So here's the before and here's the after. And and to Al's point, you don't want to do too much. Yeah. You're going to no. pull them out of the feel of the. Of the but whole it thing. does, um, you know, like Al was saying about the mood. I don't. I don't think it changed the mood very much. What do you think, Al? Let me see before and after again. There's okay. the before. There's the after. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, it didn't change it much at all. Yeah. And yet you can see the neck better and the muscles in the neck better. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. And then maybe maybe you might want to just go in and see if we can get any more out of that eye. I lightened that eye up quite a bit. Yeah. Well, I would try and do more shaping rather than lightening it. Um, okay. but let's just see if there's anything we can do about that. So we do a new brush and uh, let's have a look at that. Maybe what we try is uh, see what the highlight, just take the highlight up, maybe the shadow down a little bit, see what clarity might do in this eye. It was pretty clear. Yeah, well, clarity gives kind of an apparent contrast there. I don't like something. There's. It looks like he's got two pupils now. Yeah, it's almost too ghosted. I yeah. Remember. So. It doesn't look like a real eye anymore. No. I, it's just something happened. <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. Yeah, sometimes. It, you just go too far and you got to come back. So let's take the effects back. I think we're all zero to X. I think, well, clearly should be zero. Did I close something up? Hmm. Anyway. I think we'll just lose that. 
actually that's where it was. All right, I'll tell you what, let's see what this mask is doing. Go back to this one. Yeah, it looks like you're getting a little bit from this one already. All right, so on this negative brush, we could just go in there and take it out of the eye. There what are you taking out of the eye now? Uh, that first one that we did when we oh, okay. added clarity and contrast mm -hmm. to the, uh, yeah. I think that's enough to do it. Okay. Yeah, so if we're looking at that mask now, you can see it's mm -hmm. not affecting the eye. Okay. Yeah, I think that works better. I have a question, Sandy. Yeah. So like under the horse's chin there, it's real sharp, very delineated. If you took a little blur brush and went along there, would it you know, look less cut out? Yeah, you could do that. Definitely, just selectively. Yeah, mm -hmm. that'd be re real easy to do. Uh... Yeah, I had feathered it. Mm -hmm. Some areas look good, uh, but others look just a little too sharp. Yeah, just a little more. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it's, it's pretty, pretty blurred now. I would do it on a layer though, so that you're not blurring the uh, back. Sure. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, yeah it is on a layer. layer. Yeah, it's yeah. on its own layer. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, good. I will do that. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Jim. Thanks for bringing those in. Was that all of them? No. No, there's a couple oh, more. more. Yeah, that was right. Yeah, there we go. This one. That's a blooming agave in my yard in Tucson with a oh. sunset. Nice. Thank you. Beautiful sunset. Yeah, I was lucky that um, I caught it. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's amazing how fast they do change. <laughs> they <Wow>. do. <laughs> we had one in the front yard that lasted for two and a half years. And when it fell, we measured it, it was 35 feet tall. Wow. Uh -huh. Yeah. The birds loved it, especially the hawks. Yeah, they get up there. I, I had to get a landscaper to my neighbor's yard because they were in Washington for two years. And I think, yeah, I probably got up to about 40 feet or so. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah so it... They were leaning toward the neighbor's house. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we better do something with that. Lucky that that wasn't close to the house. It was close to the road. Yeah, 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 they are pretty. Okay. This is another one of 50. Very nice. I like this, I like this one. Nice. Nice. Yeah. I like that one. Yeah. He's running right at me. <laughs> yes. well, real perked I up too. That one. Mm -hmm. You got that tail. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, we had a, they were teasing him with a mare over the fence. So oh. he was all excited. Mm. I wonder if just toning some of this pink down a bit. You know, I thought about that, but I just thought it was so darn cute. <laughs> yeah, it is cute. <laughs> I left it. <laughs> Not talking about a lot, maybe maybe down toward yeah. this. Well, everything else is so white. Yeah. Either, yeah. yeah. But I, their I, noses are pink if they yeah, have white I don't on them. Pink, it's just a little bright. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. I thought about it and I thought, oh, it's just so cute. It is cute. <laughs> Stupid. And then again, I did the background. I tried to take him out as a subject um, in Photoshop, uh -huh. and I it kept taking out all the wispy hairs. So I went into remask, and for once, now they have three different options for masking. They have an AI, and then they have two more. And the middle one, I think, had something to do with contrast and they said use this for if you're doing like wedding veils or or, or um, dresses or whatnot that you can see through and I tried that on the tail hair and it, and it captured a lot of those wispy hairs nice that, I did a pretty a good job plug-in remask 
Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've heard of it, but I've not used it. Uh, I it used to be with all I used. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it's gotten better. It's okay. never really done a good job on hair as far as coarse hair that yeah. I. Yeah, the, I, I've got the Topaz one and it was working pretty nicely for a while. And then they, they stopped supporting it lately. No, but now they did. I, I did an upgrade on it and it seems to be improved because it wasn't working for me for a while. Yeah, yeah but they haven't, they haven't done any upgrades for a while. So, same with Studio 2. They, in fact, they don't even show it on their website anymore. Ooh, kind of sad. That's not good. Yeah. Anyway, let's look at this next one. It's just a flower I took into Topaz and played around, had some fun with it. Yeah, that's nice. What do you think about a little vignette on this one? Oh, that might be nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is kind of one-dimensional towards the edges. Mm -hmm. Yeah, since we still got Photoshop over, let's just grab that one. I think it's down here. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, where are you? I don't use it that much in this plug. -in. Under effect. It's under effects, Sandy. I thought it was, but I'm under right. vignetting. I guess yeah. I just can't read. There you go. There we go. That's it's where it was. Mm -hmm. reason I didn't see it. And then you can open it up and do what you want with yeah. feather and yep. so on. Bring the yeah, mm -hmm. I think that yeah. helps. Yeah, just a little. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That was your last one there. Right. Okay. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I enter the realm of weird. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, a statue up at uh, Safari Park in Suarita. And uh, just pulled that into Topaz and put one of the, uh, I think, uh, the vintage filters on there. Mm. After masking the frog out. Nice, because it really makes him stand out now. Yeah. Really good. Good. Has an alien quality to it. <laughs> well, I like the environment. Yeah. Uh, that's a concrete walkway that I worked with a little bit, taking the, the uh, lines out and uh, kind of toning down the texture a bit. Uh -huh. Yeah, it works nice. Yeah. Looks like a pathway instead of a uh, cement walkway. Right. Yeah. Nice. What do you think about it? How, how Croft is that, here? Steve? Uh, Al, it's not very cropped at all, I don't think, um, because that was I was pretty close to the subject. And I, uh, you I, said, would, um, I, I would have liked to move the subject back a little bit. Mm -hmm. So it's not quite as centered. That that's personal, but okay. Yeah, and if you did, well, if you go to reshoot, I would maybe toward lean lean toward one of the paths. So maybe this one. So although then he's looking out, so maybe I might want to come over here. Well, there's some distracting stuff in the background. If you took it head on, it's a swing um, <laughs> uh, okay. and a big support to his right and right in back of him. Oh, um, okay. So it's possible to do. I've got to get back up and, and shoot again because it's just a, kind of a foray up there to see what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, where, where is this at? Safari Park up in Suarita. Oh, okay. It's, uh, again, if you go up, if you were going to go to Fry's, mm -hmm. you just take that same uh, the road that run, runs past Fry's and uh, go up over the hill. And I think it's just a little ways down on your left. Oh, OK. Interesting. Yeah. And they've got a, a bunch of interesting statues if you like to take pictures of statues. So. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
of course, I can't vouch for the copyright entity of the stuff because they're not uh, marked, but. Uh, Very nice. Yeah. Like just uh, just playing around a bit. Yeah. I like I like the color of it, Steve. I think it's really cool. Yeah, the color background really complements it too. Yeah, that's a dreamy quality, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's what I was probably going for, Jim. <laughs> One of the effects, anyway. No, it's nice. Okay. And this is just uh, one of the multi filament um, old fashioned light bulbs. Oh, wow. Taken head on. I thought it was an Art Deco piece. Or it looks like a platter. Like some sort of Indian piece. Mm. Yeah, I was just totally bored last night. So it was the one on the <laughs> patio. And uh, so I. Drug the camera out, set it up underneath. Um, and I think the distance between the limbs and the ball was probably six or eight inches. Oh, wow. So, yeah. Cool. Very creative. Just a, an odd little thing to, uh, to check out, see how it came out. So. Yeah, it worked nicely. Did you edit out all the text that was on the bulb, or was, was there no? No, text? no, there, there isn't any there. This is uh, nothing at all on the bulb. So, what you're seeing is the bulb and then the tip of it right in the middle, and everything yeah. else. Uh, yeah. yeah. And you can kind of see the filaments reflected in the uh, outer portion of the bulb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really nice. I like it. Is that one of those old bulbs where if you're looking at it in profile, it, it comes up on the top and then it goes up almost like a little nipple? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Those always have a nice shape. Boy, I haven't seen one of those in a long time. Nice. So this uh, next one, I went up to the, uh, um, the Buddhist temple up on uh, Nogales. They have a statue in the side yard uh, of the Buddha itself. So I pulled that into uh, Photoshop and did a subject select and cut everything else out around it, which took a bit of time. Um, <clears throat> and then took that into Topaz um, and used the starry, I think, starry glitter effect. But then overlaid each one of those. Um, layered in the other six Buddhas, I guess you'd say, uh, and used a different effect on each one. Wow. Oh, that's neat. That's really cool. Um, and then a bit of lens flare up at the top, so. I like um, that. But that's the first time I ever stopped in up there, and it's uh, kind of a neat little temple, um, considering. So each one of them is a copy of the one, the very first one then? Yes. And then uh, the scale <clears throat> was uh, enlarged as I went back. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of a reverse perspective, which is yes. yeah. interesting, interesting in itself. I, I think I would like you just to tone down the, the faces on the far Buddhas right on the edge mm -hmm. on both sides. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're a little light. That just, could be easy, easily done. Yeah. Uh, it's just really cool. And there's something funny about the image you have in the very, very front on the bottom. It has a yes, little bit of uh, orange showing through. Well, down at the bottom, I think. Uh, I didn't crop this one quite as tightly as I should have probably. Um, yeah. but or if it's on another layer, maybe just pull that layer down. No, it, it's actually the first layer up. Oh, it is. Okay. That's that's on the, the uh, row that they okay. have hanging off there. But yeah. it's just some shadow structure at the bottom. So. Oh. 
I think since then I've cropped that out. So yeah. yeah. Well, if you really have nice. you could you could stretch it too. You know, Just kind of a fun very trick. creative. Is yeah, to, very good. Yeah, that is nice. It'd be easier on a layer, but um let me just get a draw tool. I'm going to probably be sloppy yeah. here, but basically I'm just going to go. Kind of like that. What tool are you using? A select tool? Uh, yeah, just a lasso. Okay. So for this one. And I'm, uh, I'm just going to hold down the Transfer. I'm using the shortcut, and I'm just gonna just gonna pull it down a little bit. There you go. Yep. Okay. Now it's gonna it's not anchored well, so you're gonna have to move it up just a little bit. And if you hit it, hit Command H, you'll get rid of the dancing answer, and you kind of see where it. There. Yeah. Now, now it's yeah. gone. Yep. yep. Just hit there, and you're good to go. So you don't even have to cut and paste. Just take the and, and warp it. It, it's easier if it's in a uh, layer, obviously. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a layer, just carefully mask it. And it looks like it, I, I, I moved it a little bit over here. But you get the idea. Okay. Yep. Very cool. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. <clears throat> and I know this is um, three cactus blooms layered in with a spherical filter put on top. And then I think that was probably the last thing done, but uh, then just the squirrel brush, brush used in Photoshop on each layer successively. So uh, it's doesn't really look like a photograph at all, but it started out as three. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Really nice. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Very neat. And did you use a filter in Topaz on that or? Uh, I don't think so. See, I think I did um, an oil sure. fil filter overlay on one layer. Uh -huh. um, and then I got, excuse me. Yes, I probably did take it into Topaz to get this uh, variegated color effect that you see in the corners. Oh, ah, okay. So, and then there was a texture filter that I put in from my collection. Oh, um, ah, I got you. I was just playing around again, seeing what uh, what might come out the other end. <laughs> I think you need a one man show. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. Yeah. And this next one was just for fun. Well, they're all just for fun. Oh, how cute! Oh, I love these, it. These are just my moon burrows. <laughs> <laughs> and. All the pictures, yeah, they're all uh, they're all photographs. So uh, uh, the one, uh, the background picture is the one that I took up uh, at uh, Thimble Peak during the blue hour one night. Um, the moon was just pulled in and made uh, a little bluer than it normally is. And then the burrows um, were there a statue at, at uh, uh, outside the shop in Tubac. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were taken into uh, Photoshop and then pulled out as a select subject and then taken into Topaz and two different filters applied there. Really cool. Very cute. I think this is like, uh, I was probably thinking of my granddaughter when I was doing this. So. <laughs> She'll probably like it. Mm -hmm. oh. It has a nursery rhyme feel to it. Yeah. 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 You just need to write a kid's book to go with it now. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's not the cow jumped over the moon. It's the, the donkey jumped oh, over the moon. The donkey jumped over the moon. Yeah. Or the donkey that kicked the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kick the moon in the next galaxy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Love that. You said you took, Steve, you took it into Photoshop and did a select subject, and then from there took it into Topaz? Yeah. OK. 
right so see. it was it was select subject just to pull the borough out and uh -huh. um, then copy it over into um, a blank uh, uh, canvas oh, in okay. Photoshop. Okay, and then into Topaz for color. And then the, okay. the back the backgrounds were put in uh, individual. Yeah. So. Okay. There we go. Hi. Nice. I was. Uh, this is a shot inside my. Uh, living room from my dining room. I, I, I had the big lens on. I was just trying something out, and it's actually a <laughs> photograph of lights, uh, a light uh, fixture on a table. But I took it at an angle, and I thought, well, what, what can we do with this? This yes. looks a little bit interesting. So it's been in Topaz a couple of times to get some of the nice effects on the on the. So this is the glass bulbs of the light. I like that, Alan. Yeah, thanks. And it's chromium um, yeah. stands here. So looks very New York City apartment. <laughs> you know, you know what makes this, I think, in my mind, is is the angle that it's lying at. It's, Absolutely. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I agree. This is completely unintentional. I'm just sitting at the table and I just wanted to check something out and focus on the on my big lens and yep. that's what I got it so very sophisticated oh. but uh, the topaz thing again adds so much more a character to it I think so mm -hmm. yeah so yeah. that kind of flare effect or I'm trying to remember what it's called um, Gibson. you know, honestly, I don't remember when okay. I get into topaz, I just kind of keep on going, and and I know if I'm guilty of not writing these things down, but I know, um, I know. <laughs> just <laughs> do the same, yeah. I can't remember what it's called, but it's kind of like an electrifying type of deal. It could be, there's quite a few of them on here, actually. I think I went through radiate, to, I think that's it, radiate, radiate, yeah. I remember. All right, nice. Yeah, thanks. That uh, just wow. proves, Alan, you don't have to go very far from from home or even well, was, uh, home to get a good picture. That was ten feet from. <laughs> yeah, maybe twenty feet. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I was out. Managed to get out a nice little walk the other day. There was beautiful <clears> weather, <throat> and came across this guy. So. He uh, posed quite a few for quite a few shots for me. That is a one majestic bird. Yes. Uh, yeah. Now I was thinking. I don't think I've ever know, seen so many white tips on the chest. Yeah, no, that's, that's the most white tips I've ever seen on that. I was just going to say that 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 on, on his breast there looks a lot some damage. I think I was wondering whether I should fix that up or not. But, you know the little. But to the oh yeah, the, the tail feather. No, at, at the left hand side on his on the breast, straight on below the chest. The chest. Oh, oh. On the chest. he might have just forgotten to groom himself well that morning. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he's really old. The gray's coming through. <laughs> Alan, where did you find this guy? This is uh, in a place called Fish Creek Park. It's, it's, I live right on the edge of it. And it's a beautiful area. The Bow River runs through this park. And there's quite a lot of bald eagles and ospreys uh, fish there. So This is in Canada, right? Yes, it's in Calgary, yeah. OK. Yeah. I love how his head is cocked down. Yeah. yeah. He's, uh, he's pretty big, you know. They're pretty big birds. Yes, they are. That must be, is that kind of a, like a juvenile because he's got the more. No, no. no. This, uh, the the uh, bird site that uh, uh, put these images up into, reckon this guy's probably about five years old. Oh, wow. I um, thought they were darker than that. I know this, that is a, this is a bald eagle, right? The no. bald eagle, yeah. 
Yeah, uh, juveniles don't have a white head. Right, yeah, they're yeah. very brown. Yeah. yeah. Quite dark. Would, it's uh, do the are the females white headed too, or would this be a female because it's? I think I think they're all white headed. They're I all think. yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. The females are usually a little bigger, but um, this is this is pretty big. Um, might be a female. And just because of the rest of the body color. Oh, one, one wicked looking beak on it, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. 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 The only thing I would do, Ellen, is you got a little bit of white in the left hand side in the middle there. I might just tamp that down a little bit. It's probably a little bit of snow there. It is snow, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in here. No, towards the, the edge. The, the, you could just crop it. Just, oh, yeah, all, all the way to the, the edge. Yeah, 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 right there. Yeah, yeah. Pull it in, just hair yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I did mask it out a little bit and and i darkened and blurred the background just to make her mm -hmm. pop a little bit mm -hmm. and then i and then i kind of messed up the foreground a little bit so i just copied and pasted a little bit of that over to the edges to to, to make her in the same mm -hmm. plane yeah very nice but the eyes uh the eyes pretty Eyes great, got a nice little yep. light in the eye too. Yeah, quite an amazing animal. Got got lucky. Mm. Actually, I, I probably had about uh, a good thirty shots of this bird. And wow! It was very difficult to decide which ones to to uh, put up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so the next one, the next one, you'll see if she's in flight. Oh, wow! Oh wow! Beautiful. And the, the far away feathers, they almost look like leather and not like. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I'm sure it does, huh? Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this one up a bit. So you guys wow. Can, yeah. That's beautiful. Yeah. I just got, uh, I got, I blurred the background a little bit in this one as well. But mm -hmm. Not a little bit, but it was already pretty, pretty good. But. Mm -mm -mm. Nice job. Thank you. Yeah, she just took off from that standing and then circled right around and now that she's going through the trees and I just managed to keep her in focus the whole way around. <laughs> yeah, wow. Beautiful. Sometimes you get lucky. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Does the Nikon have the, uh, the eye tracking for focus? This is on uh, my D500, so that does not have that. Wow. Uh, and I don't think, to be honest with you, the, the Z6 that I have, which does have eye tracking, mm -hmm. uh, it would not do as good a job as a D500. Pretty uh, sure. Interesting. Yeah. And, then, <laughs> <laughs> and then this is uh, just on an icy pond. This guy was skating away. I said, I'm going to take some shots. No, uh, I, I kind of like this a little bit because it makes it look like these are distant mountains, which they're not, of course. But and then, uh, oh, um, yeah, I like the shadow. I like the shadow. I like the silhouette effect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah. Yeah. He was just having a ball. It was a beautiful day. Just, what only only minus 20. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was uh, plus 12 degrees cent centigrade, so I'm not sure what that is, but it was pretty warm. Sun was out, felt really good. Hmm. Yeah. I so, like the starkness of the right side, but I'm just wondering if you ought to take too bright. this down a little bit. Yeah. I don't know. Kind of pure looking with it being that white. It is, yeah. Anyways, go either way with that. Yeah. Nice. Thanks. This is this is just a little bit of a a weed growing along by the river there, and I just changed its color, made it come alive. Hot, hot pink.
Right. With a pop of turquoise. Yeah. Just a little touch of green. Yeah. Just thought it looked a little bit different. So, I mean, it was all right the way it was, but yeah. when, you, when you change it, it just. Yeah. I would desaturate this little green in here. Okay. Yeah, I'd yeah. clone some of this over, but it's probably easier just to desaturate that with a brush. Right. Okay. Quick. Yeah, that's one of those topaz flaws of just yeah. can't get around. A little bit, a lot, not a little bit of green in the main stalk there, just at the branches. Really, I kind of like that, you know. The little yeah, I would leave that. I would just get it out of this little loop in here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like a spillover there down at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, didn't, didn't notice that. Nice. Okay. Yeah. There Thanks go. for bringing those in. Thank you. The Northern Tundra. All right. Done. Oh, we got a ways to go yet. Yeah, we still got a gym. <laughs> yeah, this was we're, we're going over shop. today. Go ahead. Up at Gates Pass, it was up there hiking. The other week, and uh, I took a picture, and I, I, the picture itself just I liked the look of it, but I didn't like the way it, I couldn't get it to come out, so I put it in the topaz and put some uh, pastel oil on it, and um, thought I liked it better. So I don't know if it's if it, you think it's too much or no, no, no. I don't think mind. it's overall like the same color value needs some punchiness maybe in the middle okay we're bringing the browns down a bit so the greens pop a little bit more okay. I don't know. you see the depth because you've got the, the path you've got the mountains uh -huh. and whatnot but the colors just all seem on the same well, in painting well, that was kind of the problem I had with the original picture. I just couldn't get any any colors to really come out that I like. So I mm -hmm. tried the oil and stuff. And, and I and like the green on that. Though. That that helped it. But right. It still like was lacks a punch. I thought. It does. How about, how about using a linear gradient on the foreground? Ah. And pulling pulling it up a bit. Yeah. Oh. It, it needs the okay. center needs more attention. Yeah, it's just kind of dingy up here. Mm -hmm. It's kind of flat. Did you try a different sky on it? No, I didn't. I just used what was there. Yeah, that seems okay. Um, well, another thing you might want to try is, uh, oh, I don't know. I, I always try and play with clarity and dehaze, but maybe you just want to do it in the foreground. So. Because I think that gold needs to mm -hmm. come up a bit. Yeah, pop a little yeah. bit. Let's yeah. like the sky and then we'll invert it. Your eye automatically will go to yellow. So gold is another. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yellow. Yeah, so let's, let's just see what happens if we bring a little clarity up into this area. Yeah, I think that helps a lot. That helped a little bit, oh, yes. A little bit. A lot, yeah. That, yeah. And then really made the path come out. Come just alive. a little dehaze, kind of bring those mountains down a little bit more. And then you could kind of gradiate it, to either lighten or darken it. Um, now, yeah. you, could, you could also uh, take a brush and, and play with the path a little bit if you wanted to. Mm -hmm. Okay, brighten that up a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So okay. let's just uh, grab a brush here. Let's start pretty big. It's kind of, you know, stuff like that. I've got you know, the auto masking on it. So sometimes you got to go over some of the areas because it'll miss them. If your center's not right on the button there, but yeah, you, know, you could take that and let's see here. Maybe we just push the highlights up a little bit and the whites. 
this. Yes, now you're okay, getting there you go. some dimension in it. Something like yeah. that. Mm -hmm. That helped. It did. Yeah, and then. And now the highlights on the back of the cactus are just popping. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very good. Thanks, Sandy. Sure. Okay. That's a bit yeah. Different. Just, just got to shape it. You know. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Oh, nice. Oh, nice. Now, this guy was up at uh, Bernardo's when I went. He was up there shooting the uh, snow geese and stuff, and he just come out running out across the field. So. <laughs> kind of blurred the back around him and a little bit on the front and, and uh, sharpened him up a little <laughs> bit. Mm -hmm. That's beautiful. That's a beautiful shot. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. What do you guys think about cropping in on the subject a little bit more? Yep, all well, that. I think safe. I would. Yeah. Yeah. Ring neck pheasants are so pretty. Have more yeah. pheasants. You can even make them a little asymmetrical, you know, if you want. Something like that. Nice. Maybe, maybe even bring up the highlights a little bit, Sandy. I don't know. Yeah. Seems kind of muted. I don't know. Yeah. You know. It, yeah. You mean in the background or the bird? The Both. Oh, actually for me yeah. both yes just yeah just do it be... no the background i kind of i kind of darkened the... right so it was brighter mm -hmm. but yeah you can get selective with it yeah there you go maybe just pull some lights up just a little bit there you go okay so that would be yeah yeah just and those little those little highlights yeah, I would, I would in the mask grass it white here you know because the highlights in the well. grass just ring the form a frame around the bird mm -hmm. really nice yeah good call Steve so it must not have been pheasant season where this guy was. <laughs> <laughs> No, you've never seen him if it was. Yeah, no. I think they have a calendar and they just vacate the area. <laughs> I, I agree. I get, I get left behind. Huh? Mm -hmm. Ooh. This is one uh, I shot off. He was out on a golf course. I shot him from the patio, my patio. Yeah. So uh, the sun, I thought the sun, I really liked the way the sun played in the red grass and stuff. He's a healthy looking guy. Yeah, yes, he, he is. is. I was last year, your four last year was one out here that I mean, that was the sickest looking coyote I ever seen. But this yeah. one here looks pretty healthy. Yeah, they get like just, funny and lanky. <laughs> yeah, he looks like he just came from the groomers. Yeah. I think somebody posted on his either neighbors or next door neighbors about uh, there was some big dog walking down the street. Um, was anybody missing their dog? It was, you know, this. It was a big dog and it was kind of light brown and I'm going, you must yeah, be a I'm newcomer. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Put your little dog out and see what happens. Yeah. <laughs> mm, lunch. Yeah. yeah, that's nice. A like, beautiful animal. Yeah. yeah. Normally I'd darken it up a little bit, but I kind of like the uh, lightness of this one. Yeah. You too. Yeah. He was actually was in the shadow, and I had to bring this coat out because it was pretty dark. You can see the shadow he's casting on the ground. The sun was behind him. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. yeah. It's nice to live in a place where you see these things, you know. It is. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. amazing. And these. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That was the rainstorm we had last week. Yep. I uh, just took that into Photoshop and darkened the sky down a little bit and uh, darkened the foreground down a little bit and then lightened the grass grassy spots up a little bit. Very nice. Good one. Good one. That was shot with a 16 millimeter. Yeah. What do you think about maybe losing a little foreground? Well, I do like that rock, but. Maybe something up like that. Yeah. 
Me too. I suppose you could transplant that rock if you wanted to. <laughs> that give, puts more of your eye to the rainbow that way. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah I do kind of like that. Yeah, and it takes a rising out of the center too. So mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, I think that's all. I mean, you could you could cut that out and just kind of tweak it in a little bit somewhere mm -hmm. if you wanted to keep it. Yeah, yeah I do like that. Right. It brings the buildings more in perspective too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Just keep that horizon to the bottom third. I think that'll help. Okay. Oh, nice. And this was the full moon last week, whenever it was. Mm -hmm. Good fun. Very nice. I like you. those little clouds. Yeah, that's what I yeah. thought made the picture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, that lovely atmospheric distortion, too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It almost looks like an orange. <laughs> it does. Yeah, it does. Yeah, there's a navel right there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is that like a four or five hundred millimeter? Or? Uh, it's my five hundred on the crop, so it's about seven fifty. Right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, it's, I didn't. I probably cropped about twenty percent mm -hmm. after I after of the original picture. Mm -hmm. Just took some of the sky out of it. Yeah, I like some of the purple you're getting up here too. It's real nice. So a little bit of trivia. I was reading yesterday that Coco Pelli, which is that uh, image you see on everybody's garage of a little guy dancing with a flute. Right. Yeah. That you can see him in the full moon and I'm looking and I think I see him right up at the top there. I, I do, I do too. <laughs> How about hey, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, very nice. Going the wrong way. <laughs> okay. Thanks for bringing those in. Yep. Thank you. Well, you've got the man in the moon, the rabbit in the moon, and now Coca Pelle in the moon. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I think you'll find some interesting. Things in these shots. I just glanced up through them this morning. You're up, Jim. Yeah. So this is a, a bunch of series uh, that I did. Um, they are on the the shore of Lake Michigan. I lived on the west shore of Lake Michigan, and uh, as the tide comes in and then recedes, you get a bunch of designs or kind of things that the water does to the sand. Mm -hmm. And I just found them to be interesting. And so here's a, there's not much to tell you about these pictures other than just, uh, they were taken late in the afternoon. And uh, so that's why you get some of the color gradations. And then the sand is kind of dark and light. So, uh, you know, here's a snake, you know, that obviously uh, is crawling along. And uh, so, you know, you can just go wild with these. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, so, I, I used to live in Puerto Rico uh, and watching the different patterns that I would make going in and out was amazing. Yeah, a lot of fun. How did you get the, uh, the gradation in here? Well, it was the sun, and okay, way, and and the the darkness and the lightness of the sand. It kind of came right in there, and uh, just that was the natural look. Wow, purple and yeah. gold are always a good combo. Yeah, yeah, and the the black is just you see the black along the beaches a lot of times just mixed in. Yeah, it's like um, a silver. Or, or oil spills, who knows? <laughs> right, uh, <laughs> like the yeah. shale and everything that just yeah, brings exactly. up. And... Yeah. Right. yeah, you get those on the Chicago side too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of fun. Yeah, so you can go through these pretty quickly. So a bunch these of are, barking yeah. skills. <laughs> yes, exactly. These are all abstracts, but yeah. Yes. Really nice. 
Yeah, I see no, three I of your too. seals right there. Yeah. Yeah, I do too. It's great. Or a seal with a lizard on his back. <laughs> Yeah, you can just go through these. Yeah, this is uh, a headless monkey. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Bringing through the trees. The, the gibbon brachiating, yes. <clears throat> There's a bird. Mm -hmm. Yeah, what kind of bird? I don't know what. It's a um, Could be dinosaur a bird. <laughs> yeah, a, pterodact a, pterod a pterodactyl. pterodactyl. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I couldn't think of the name. <laughs> Uh, they're frog. Oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> These are amazing. They almost look like like uh, cliff paintings. Yeah. yeah. Cave paintings, yeah. Well, when I first saw them, I thought maybe they were like different element deposits in, in uh, sides of cliffs or something, but mm -hmm. I realized it was sand. Yeah. Oh, that looked fun. Octopus. No, these these yeah. guys here. They're octopus. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Yeah. So, so these are from bubbles that burst, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Very, very interesting. Very interesting. A lot of fun. Wow. Fascinating. <clears throat> Good eye, Jim. Those are great. There's your one man show. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're back to Kim. I think that's everybody. Did I miss anyone? Mm, no, I don't think so. Yeah, let me pull some stuff up. I uh, thought I'd do the door knocker series today. We'll just start right. with some full doors here. Oh, those are fun. And that's the same front door? Uh, two of them, yeah. But it's two yeah. front doors. Yeah, they're two. They look so similar, but is it on the same house? These two yeah. doors are together. Yeah, it's a double door. Yeah, but they're not together. I mean, they're so dissimilar. They're similar and dissimilar. Yeah, yeah I think one weathered considerably more than the other. Yeah. Well, but the design, the the you know the the frame of the box around the is not the the same. No, it's not the same. No, no. Yeah. This would be like which what where are the differences? <laughs> you could yes. do a comparison. Yeah. Wow, I love it. Color and textures are beautiful, Sandy. <clears throat> uh, the patinas are amazing. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. This was back in Genoa. I think last week I showed the one near this one that had the big spikes on an angle. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this was a Another side of that building. What about a little vignette on that one? Yeah, that could work. Good idea. But it's I love like the shadows. Mm -hmm. It's like something from Oz. Yeah. yeah, it yeah. Does. <laughs> so it must have been early in the day, mid morning, uh, mid afternoon. I think it was late afternoon. Yeah. Okay. Because the shadows there. Yeah. Are long and slanted, which kind of gives you an idea that the sun was still pretty high in the sky. Yeah, 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 mid to late afternoon, I think. Actually, it might be earlier. It, it got dark there by about six. So, you okay? Yeah. Oh, no, that's yeah. nice. Yeah. So, it could, I, I was thinking of snapping it up a little more, but then I kind of liked it. Oh, I like yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. The way it is. Beautiful color on the wood. Yeah. Nice contrast with the door knocker. Yeah. Mm. Another variation of the lion there. Nice texture on that door. Yeah. Yeah, the weathering there was great. Mm. One of those doors, I just, even if they were restored, they'd leave a lot of the old patina and stuff underneath or, or the old rough wood and just paint over it. Did you did you crop okay. that? Yeah, just a little bit. I, I shot it pretty tight. Okay. I kind of uh, almost would like a little more room on the edges. Yeah, there was some, some kind of rough boards at the edges. Uh, there, so I brought it in a bit. But yeah, I would have too, but it just wasn't there. Yeah, that's too bad. It's nice though. Like the yin and the yang of it. Right. 
I was thinking of maybe running some, some diagonal gradations here and here, so I just have like a light area going across. What do you think? That might be nice. Yeah, that could work. Okay. Oops, looks like I'm keyed in on that one. There we go. I thought it said letter, but it's not. It's L-A-T-T-E-R-E. -T -T -E. Yeah, it's the Italian version of letter. Oh, OK. Pretty small envelopes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think there was a slot above it, actually. Oh. Okay. Yeah. We're back in the day, yes. Yeah, that's true. I like the angle on that uh, door handle. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really very pretty. Cool designs, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't think they went to Walmart and got that. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, what a I contrast. Like I like the yeah. color on that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very rich. Yeah, a lot of reflection from the sky there. Did you punch such that? A, up? Such a uh, uh, attention to the artistic and the detail. Um, just on their door knockers, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the Italians are the artists of the world, you know. Yeah, they really are. I just noticed I probably should knock this little white out there. Mm. Very just nice. love the way things age there, too. Yeah. Oh, wow. And this was just That's a locking neat. mechanism in the other guy. It looks like a jail lock or something. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it's ominous. He just <laughs> took this little hook on a chain it was, uh, and, and used that to kind of keep it shut. Right, right, you break in. A little <laughs> secure. <laughs> yeah, this was on the inside, and then there was two of these. I, I guess they probably just put a big board. Yeah, put a bar in there. Yeah. In a bar or board or something. Yeah. Wow. These are kind oh. of fancy. Mm -hmm. It's quite a bit of iron work to get that. Yeah, one. it sure is. To I've not never seen like anything that. like that. <laughs> Uh, it goes uh, curves smooth like that. Yeah. yeah. Real. You wow. can maybe do one, but doing two of them. Yeah. yeah. Work it. Work it while it's hot. Yeah. You do work it while it's hot. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Amazing feat. Yeah, this is an apartment building. Hmm. Well, that is well, rich. Yeah. It is. So each apartment has a little lion head by the yeah. number. Yeah. That's cool. Their buzzer, yeah. <laughs> a little, little doorbell in their mouth. Yeah. Very cool. Uh, I can. Yeah, I think this is the last one coming up here. Yeah. Another letter. Another letter. Yeah. Now that one actually That's has pages. So right, pink. It up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's your one man show. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Door knockers. Yeah. You got to. A few more from last time, I think. There, I'm just trying to get them all together and kind of very nice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. or something. Yeah, there's, yeah. there's still more. <laughs> just keep going. Oh wow! Anyway, well, those are really interesting. Well, I think you you probably have to do one of the the shows on Showtime there. Yes. Can, yeah, just call it call. just yeah. call it knobs and knockers, and you'll get a bunch of people following. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Uh, best knockers of Italy. There you go. <laughs> do it. Boy, there it'll you be go. A record breaker. <laughs> oh, so, right.